Governor Julius Jones is off Oklahoma death row this morning, just hours before he was set to be executed for the 1999 murder of Edmund businessman Paul Howe. Governor Kevin Stitt stepped in, sparing his life. He is now facing life in prison without the possibility of parole. Joining us live to talk here at the table, Oklahoma attorney Kelly Masters, a member of Jones's legal team. She actually spoke at his clemency hearing. Thanks for joining us again to talk about this and uh, your reaction Absolutely. this morning after uh, kind of taking in all of the announcements that came yesterday. Relief. Yeah. Uh, we really, really, uh, we thought we thought that was it. We uh, we were in McAllister. We had spent the morning speaking with Julius, helping him prepare his final statements, mm. uh, his final words, what he wanted his legacy to be. Uh, that entire morning, he had already had his last meal. He had said his goodbyes. Uh, and so getting that call was, uh, it, it was, I, I think I'm still a little bit in shock, mm -hmm. um, but we're relieved. I know this has been an emotional process. You and I have uh, kept in communication yes. through the last uh, couple of months and even the last few days. And yes. uh, when we spoke on the phone the other day, when you thought it might be a different outcome, uh, yeah. we had an emotional conversation. Oh, yeah. You were emotional <laughs> about what could happen. Yes. What has been that emotion that has been uh, through the last couple of weeks? It's been a roller coaster. Uh, there have been moments when we all felt optimistic. Uh, I had the opportunity to sit down and meet with Governor Stitt uh, with the legal defense team uh, about 10 days ago. And we walked out of the meeting feeling somewhat hopeful that he was looking at all of the options, listening, uh, studying the facts of the case. Uh, and, and we were hopeful. But as the days wore on, uh, and nothing was said. It was it was hard to maintain that hope. We still held out hope, but at the same time, we we all had to prepare for what we thought was was the inevitable that time we were going to see him. Yeah, that we were going to see him executed. What was Julius saying in those um, hours before what he thought was going to be his execution? Uh, there was some. Obviously, he was uh, nervous. He was exhausted. He uh, really, I think, struggled with not having certainty. Uh, he had his final meeting with his family the day, but what we thought was the final meeting mm -hmm. with the family the day before, and he didn't know if he was saying goodbye. He he was filling out the forms for, you know, all of the things you don't want to think about, just picking up his remains and his mm. personal effects, and and uh, preparing himself, uh, making sure that his heart was was right before God. All of those things. He was going through this process of thinking that he was going to die and preparing for that, but also trying to hold out hope for a miracle. His, so it was all over the place. His life was spared. What are your thoughts on specifically this life without the possibility of parole? Uh, well, under this current executive order as it stands, this is it. He will spend the rest of his life in prison. Mm -hmm. um, but as we all know, executive orders can be rescinded. Uh, the governor could have a change of heart uh, and grant a pardon. Uh, he could, could reverse the executive order or a, a subsequent uh, executive order could be put in place. Mm -hmm. So as of right now, things look final, um, but, but we're going to keep, uh, keep looking at all the options and keep hope alive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, two families so impacted by this, the yes. Julius Jones family and the Paul Howe family. Yes, um, absolutely. And what would you say to Paul Howe's family with this outcome from yesterday? I, my heart has been heavy for them. They have uh, not only, not only did they endure the pain uh, of a horrific tragedy that impacted them, they've lived with ongoing pain. Uh, and, and I've always maintained after really doing um, my part in, in looking into the case and, and everything that has gone down since then uh, was that their pain was caused uh, by the prosecution being mishandled and by the defense being mishandled. This was, uh, this was not handled properly from the get-go and it impacted both families. Uh, my prayer for them is that they'll find healing. Uh, and, and it was my, my thought that um, ex going forward with an execution uh, may in some respects bring them some sort of, of bringing things to a, a close, but it, it, doesn't, it wouldn't bring healing. Uh, and their healing has to come from God and it has to come from, from truth and continuing to pursue truth. Uh, my prayers are with them. I know this is incredibly difficult and still painful. Uh, so my prayers are just that they can heal. One question real quickly, will Julius Jones stay in McAllister or do you think he will be moved to another facility? We don't know yet. Okay. We don't know yet. Those decisions are being made. It is a possibility soon. though. It is, yes. All right, anything else you wanna add Kelly today? 
Julius was so moved yesterday when we were speaking to him about the students that were walking out in support. And it wasn't about, you know, look at what they're doing for me. He was so inspired. He said, look at these kids that we can inspire to do better things with their lives so they don't end up where I am. Mm -hmm. um, what can we do to keep inspiring them? All right, Kelly Masters, thanks so much. We appreciate it. And I know that you've you. uh, been working hard on behalf of Julius Jones and his legal team. Thanks Thank for you. joining us. Thanks, Robin.